Hi everyone, welcome back for part two of our Unmanic series where we're going to discuss running a second instance of Unmanic on our media library for those of us with more than one Unraid server. I'm also going to show you an easy way to deprioritize Unmanic so it uses less CPU power as needed on the fly. If you're here looking for how to install and get started with Unmanic, be sure to check out my other video, part one on Unmanic, before watching this one. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so in part one of this series, I showed you how to install Unmanic on your primary or main Unraid server. As you can see right here, I've got it running without any issues. And what we're going to do today is install it on our secondary server on the same network. But before we get started real quick, I want to try to give you a visualization of what that looks like. So for the purposes of this video, this server right here where Unmanic is already installed is going to be server one and where we're going to install it is going to be server 2. They're, they're both on the same network, so server 1 has an IP address of 192.168.1.121 and that's where our media library is hosted. Server 2 is a local um, server on the same network and its IP address is 192.168.1.122 and we're going to connect it to our server one to start working on that media library. So now I've, I've pulled up my secondary server, server two, and we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna do is switch over to our apps tab. What we're gonna need is unassigned devices. Now many of you may already have this installed, and what we're gonna be using it for is to set up a remote share. Now if you don't have this installed, switch to your apps tab, hit the install button right here. I already have it, so I'm going to go ahead, once you get that installed, I'm going to go ahead and click on the settings icon. And as you can see, I already have one installed here for my backups. You shouldn't have anything here, but to get started, we're going to hit that add remote SMB share. Then we're going to click on the Windows icon, which is for the SMB protocol. And we know from the diagram earlier already that my main server is 192.168.1.121. So in your instance, you type in your IP address or you can hit search for servers if you're on the same network. And it should give you a list of candidate options there to choose from. Once you have that filled in, we're gonna hit next. In my case, the username is just going to be guest in all caps. I don't have a password set up for this, so I'm just going to hit next. The domain, I can leave blank. And here, we should be able to load our shares. So you can see, this is pulling up a different one, but um, what I want to do is scroll down and look for media. You should see something similar to yours. I've got all my Plex library um, in, the, in a media share. So once I get that selected, I'm gonna hit done. Success, and we can see that populated right here. Once you have that on, that on, you can go ahead and mount it. And there we can see I've got the media from 192.168.1.121 filled in. If I go to my main tab here, I'll be able to see that on my SMB shares for unassigned devices down here on the bottom. And that's the path ultimately that we're going to use to set up our Unmanic Docker this time. So let's go back to our apps tab. Now we can do a search for Unmanic. There it is. And let's hit that install button and go ahead and get this set up. If you watched the last video, then this all should look pretty familiar. We can leave our port number the same, our config path the same. We're going to change our library and TV paths, and it's going to be slightly different since we're using a remote share instead of a local share. So let's go ahead and back out of this, the pre-filled path here. 
back out of that. And then we're going to back up again until we get to MMT slash disks. Now in your case you may have disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, etc. But what you want to look for is the share that says disks. Click that and then you should see the new media share that you added earlier, the remote share under unassigned devices. Click that and then follow it down to the library path that you have on that share. So in my case I've got Plex and then Movies. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that spot right there. Then you have to do another thing. Go to Edit. And under Access Mode, we're going to change that from Read Write to RW Slave. Then you can save that. And we're going to do the same thing for our TV path. So let's back out of the pre-filled path. Go up to Disks. Go down to Media. Plex. And then this one, it's going to be TV shows. Okay, then we're going to hit edit. Change the access mode from read write to RW slave. Hit save. And on this machine, I'm going to set it to transcode to disk. And what I'm using is, in, in my case, um, a folder that I created for, an S for the SSD, unmanic. Now, this is going to be using my SSD, not my RAM. That's going to be separate from what I did in the last video. But your case may be different. You may be transcoding to RAM, cache disk, and unassigned disks, or into, into RAM. So now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and hit Apply. Let that pull down. The command finished successfully. We are good to go. Let's run back to our Docker tab. Double check that things are kicking off the way they're supposed to. And here we go. My workers are already starting to scan. Files queued for re-encoding. It doesn't have anything yet. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit more of a delay on a remote unmanic instance versus um, unmanic that you may have running on the same machine that you have hosting your media. But as you can see here, it's already starting to populate with files. It's gonna start running those through. And if I check my settings, this is all where it should be. So I've got my cache path set to the same thing that's in the container, the Docker container paths. Um, here I've got this set to TV shows, regular TV shows. And again, you can change that up uh, per our last video into whatever folder path that you want. I'm not going to go over any of these other settings. We went over that in the first video. But the next thing I'm going to do is show you exactly how you can kind of tune and limit this unmanic container so that it doesn't just completely eat up all your system resources. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are back on the container settings for unmanic. I'm going to go ahead and switch from basic to advanced view. And if you remember from our last video, you can go ahead and pin any of the CPU cores that you want to limit the container to. In my case, I want to allocate all of the CPU cores and hyperthreads that I can, but I still want to limit them if I have another Docker container that I want to be able to prioritize over this unmanic container. The way that I'm going to do that is by adding in the following dash dash CPU dash shares equals two. And what that does is it gives this container the absolute lowest CPU priority so that if another Docker container wants to use all the CPU available, it will. Note that by doing this, if the other Docker apps are idle and doing nothing, then the unmanic container will use as much as it can subject to you know its own internal settings or if we have any other cores that are pinned here. The other thing we can do is limit our memory the way we would go about that is by adding dash dash memory equals 4G or 8G, 10G, however many gigs of RAM that you want to allocate to this container. Now keep in mind, let's say I only allocate 2 gigs of RAM to unmanic. If I then try to transcode a 4 gig movie, it will fail. You have to have at least enough RAM 
allocated to the container for it to process a movie of equal size or less. Anything over what I, spe what I limit here for the memory will cause a failure. But let's say I want to do both of these. So I'm going to add 8 gigs of memory and the way I add the additional parameter is by space and then just type it in. Dash dash CPU dash shares equals oops equals 2. And that's going to limit our container to 8 gigs of RAM and it's going to make make it the absolute lowest priority for any other containers to use as much CPU as they need to while this takes a back seat. Now before we wrap the video up, it's important to touch on one last thing. On the left here I've got server 1's unmanic instance and on the right I've got server 2's unmanic instance. If you go into the settings for each one, you'll notice that on a fresh install by default the library path is slash library for each one. Now what that'll do is point the container at your entire library that you have mapped in the container settings. What you don't want to do is have two unmanic instances pointing at the same file path. This could cause problems, conflicts with missing files, and it's not something that we want to deal with. So let's go ahead and narrow this path down in each one. For this one, I'm going to set a TV library path and I'm going to have this one just work on my regular TV shows. If I scroll to the bottom, I can go ahead and hit save changes and then be sure to click that submit button for the changes to take effect. And then on server 2, I'm going to go ahead and set that one to work on my movie library. The other thing you can do instead of hitting the browse button is you can manually type it in if that's faster for you. Movies slash, in my case, regular movies. Scroll down and hit the submit button. So that about does it for this video. I hope you guys found all this useful. Be sure to hit up Josh5 drop him a line and buy him a beer. That way we can continue to enjoy some awesome development on this app. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day.